This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scripture, he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, but he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, set me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recover a sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. Thank God. Amen. Word is neither even in your heart, in your mouth there's a word of faith, which I pray that you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. With the heart man believeth, and the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation. Everyone that believes to the Jew verse and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Thank God. I want to welcome all of you to this broadcast wherever you're located in the earth. And you are receiving this by live stream, Roku, or other devices. Welcome. Have on a set with me, co-host Paul Peters. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Are you ready? I'm ready. We're full of faith, strong. I'm going to share some things that you probably won't understand, but I pray that God give you understanding. And in Second Timothy 2, 7, I think, uh, the Apostle Paul said in his writing to Timothy, consider what I say, and God will give you understanding in all things. Right. Is that the right verse? Yes, it is. God is with me. Amen. I knew that. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, folks, uh, I suppose that a good way to open this would be to tell you what Kathy D said to me this morning. She said uh, something about 1985. And how I was being changed. And I said, Kathy, I frankly think I'm overcoming Alba Sarah, my mother, quiet Baptist, and wanted our son to certainly be a quiet, respectable person. My dad had to have a loud voice, strong, a man of faith. And mother had faith, but it was kept inside of her. So it's been a real struggle for 45 years, overcoming spirits. That's what I wrestled against in my family, in myself. I'm talking about my mother, my dad, my sisters, brother-in-laws, my wife, Patty, daughter, Kathy, son-in-law, 
Jerry Bye, uh, Nephew, Ralph Edge, uh, and God knows everyone I meet, everyone I come in contact with because they have evil spirits and they must be cast out. And until they're cast out, they're going to be resisting me. And I've learned that God has led me into some wars uh, that the spirits and people actually get inside of me, down in my heart. And that was really hard to accept. I appreciate Smith Wigglesworth. I've not read that, but I'm told that he got involved in praying for people and delivering them, and the demons would get in him, and he'd have to cast them out of himself. I believe that's mostly accurate. Well, I've learned that about myself, and I had to push them out, cast them out. They overpowered my faith. If, i tell you what, turn to Psalm 143, and let's read that a Psalm of David and all of you super spiritual people that know everything there is to know about the Spirit. Listen to this. All right? All right. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man, shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsts after thee as a thirsty land. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest thou be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way where I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to thy will. For thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And to thy mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. Would you go back to verse 4 and read 4, 5, verse, 6, yeah. Verse 4, therefore was my spirit overwhelmed within me. Back up. Verse 3. 3. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. There it is. Did you not have read that song hundreds of times? I just saw something. The man's soul was persecuted, Right? Right. By the enemy. And what did the next verse say? He has smitten my life down to the ground. Is that by? No. That's still, that's still part of three. Three. Okay. What's four? Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. Therefore. Right? Right. Therefore, referring back to my the enemy, had persecuted my soul. And spent my life, what, down to the ground? Right. Therefore, my spirit, what? It's overwhelmed within me. My goodness sakes. I, God just showed me what's happened to me. You see, the enemy has smitten my soul, persecuted. They do it with their tongue. Set a barbed mail. They pull a deadly poison at the soul. 
And not only that, but their sin has been laid upon my soul. Thank God. And because my soul has been persecuted by the enemy, smitten down to the ground, therefore my spirit is overwhelmed. Does that say that? After, after it says, he has smitten my life to the ground, it also says, he hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. Eyes. Right. All because my soul was persecuted. Is that right? That's right. And that, following that, dwell in darkness, Smitten down to the ground, is that right? And may have persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Good. Therefore. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed. Right? Right. Well, is this fun? Have I had some kind of war getting... Through all this, I uh, guess I have. You see, my friends, I call you friends because you're going to be one day, not my enemy, but 45 years I've been at this, persecuted by many, everyone, Thank God. No, you didn't mean to persecute me. I'm not saying you did. I'm not condemning you. I'm not <clears throat> trying to make you feel bad. I'm telling you the truth. And I'm telling you this, Ephesians 3, <clears throat> verse 13 says that my afflictions, my tribulations, I think it says, they are for your honor. And that's God's choice, not mine. But oh, does Psalm 143 mean more to me now than it did 20 minutes ago? Yes. Glory. You got my soul and overwhelmed my Spirit. I knew my spirit was overwhelmed, but I never, well, I just saw it. God showed me. Your persecuting of my soul produced my spirit overwhelming. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, listen. I uh, started praying this morning. And immediately pain, immediate pain in the abdomen, the belly. And I knew what I'd run into because since 2010, I've really had great affliction and pressure in my spirit. 2010, I had it before, but 10, it took off. Looks like it had an open door to come get me. Thank God. Amen. And I've been through many, well, don't make it sound like a hundred, but I'm sure, well, probably 50 times where my abdomen and my belly hurt a lot of pain, at least a dozen to maybe two dozen severe pain, a half a dozen to a dozen required calling people that worked with me to pray for me, and two or three or four or more times 
that came to my house, yeah, and in my office and prayed. These are number, numbers are somewhat arbitrary, but I know what I've been through. And this, this morning, as I was praying, I had the same pain in my belly that I'm used to, and it was getting difficult. At least six to 12 or more times, I've been led by the Spirit of God Yes, more than a dozen. To say, I will not die, Satan, I will not die. Devil, I will not die, Satan, I will not die. Satan, I'm not going to die. Satan, I'm not going to die. I will not die. Satan, I will not die. Satan, I'm not going to die. And guess what? I knew the devil was trying to kill me. And I knew he had zero, zero in on me. But you know what? Normally, uh, normally five minutes or so, that I will get rid of that. Push it back enough that I can move on. And I've learned that there's such pressure on my soul, which is will, intellect, and emotion. And the the intellect is in your brain, and that the central nervous system. I happen to know a lot about neuroanatomy, physiology, and other things, and I'm not boasting. I'm just letting those that know this subject uh, what I know. And there was such pressure on my intellect on my brain that would cause involuntary movements of my arms. And of course, I knew what was happening. And when I would pray to a certain place, the involuntary movements ceased and also the pain reduced and the pressure on my head was reduced. Amen. This morning, after maybe five, maybe ten, I'm not sure, I, I'm not interested in checking out the time. I managed to get the devil off of me. And I was telling the devil, I'm not dying, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to die. Kathy D was there. She's watched me actually through about five years of this. Well, she's the one that saw the first and others have seen it since or during this past five years. But then I started praying Satan, I drive you out of my body. 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 Satan, I drive you out of my body. Satan, I drive you out of my body. Satan, I drive you out of my body. I drive you out of my body. I drive you out of my body. Satan, I drive you out. I have not prayed that way. I actually forgot I ever did. But 1977, I prayed that very way. Had a problem after I got out of Argyle. You can read about it. Had a problem with clear speech. And that bugged me. And there's nothing wrong with my voice. Nothing wrong with yours. There's a devil oppressing me. Thank God. That, but, I was going northeast of McKinney one day up 121 to attend a sick horse. I was a veterinarian still 
I'm not now, thank God. But I was praying that very way, and all of a sudden, my voice cleared completely. And I had several years. There was no attack on my voice, but it's on my soul. It's on your soul. You just read it. And back. Thank God. But this morning, I drive, drive you out. Satan, I drive you out of my body. I drive you out. I drive, drive you out. And then I got wild. I started clapping my hands. Hallelujah! 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 This drives the devil crazy. So if this is bothering you, you got a devil. Hallelujah! 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 Then I just went, Hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord! 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 Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Wow! I told KJ, I said, uh, I'm becoming a fool for Christ's sake. Well, you know, you think I'm a fool to act like this. Do you know, I was in uh, Hollywood, Florida, 1971, and I went to a football game. The Miami Dolphins playing the Chicago Bears. And It was about two or three minutes left. The score was 31 to 3. The Dolphins ahead, and they start stump, stump, defense, 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 defense. And the Lord said to me, Wouldn't it be nice if they were all saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus? I thought, Oh, I'm not that free. Some of you are so bound, you don't want to admit it. Your pride's got you. So who you're talking to? Well, if, if you're offended, I'm talking to you. And I'm bugging your devil. Look, folks. It says in Revelation 18, that every person has been a partaker, a partaker of the inhabitants of Babylon. And what are the inhabitants? Habitation, Babylon, the spirit, is a habitation for devils. The hold of every foul spirit and the and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, it says every human being has drunk of that fornication. So you think you have it, huh? Well, I'm delighted to tell you that you have. I'm delighted to do that with the Lord. Lord. So anyway, it's the first time that I've ever overcome an attack of this devil with praise. After resisting the devil, driving him out, then overcame with praise, thanks, praise and thanks. It took me an hour and a half 
to get on top of this. As I was talking to KG, I said, you know, I knew Elliot Dodge. Not a friend, but he was a friend of my grandfather, my aunt, my uncle, and my dad, and me. I saw him when I was about 18, I guess. Uh, but he was, there's a testimony about him. And you can get it on my website, from my website. And you, when you read it, it's amazing. But he'd gone to heaven, or he went to heaven three times. Three times. Now, I knew these people. Now, I knew them well. I was born in that group of people. 1932. I knew them, and they were not uh, embellishers. They were not trying to get it over it. They were sober, sincere, not always sincerely right, but sincere. Hallelujah. And this, and Elliot Hodge had returned from heaven, if I recall, and he wanted to go to sleep. And before, the nurse said, before you go to sleep, you're going to have to sing one of your songs. He sung a song that I'd never heard. And this man, they're telling him he's going to die. And I think at this juncture, maybe wrong, he finally said, okay, if I do, get Levi Burkhart to preach my funeral, and here's a text I want him to use. Amen. But he didn't die. He did in the 50s, but this happened in 1926. And he sung a song, and I can't tell you the name of it. Uh, Great Judgment Morning. Is that it? Yes. Great Judgment Morning. But you know what it says? It says it's too late to pray. Isn't that right? Yeah. You've heard it. I have too. There's a there's an African-American that I watched got and it was on it's on the internet that sings that song. I'm not sure there are any others. But my Lord, he did that. Elliot Dodge sung that song. They obviously knew it. I don't ever recall that song being sung when I was at Redwood. I did hear Paul Smith, who was a great friend of mine, say something once about the time would come when it was too late to pray. That I can remember. And I don't, I know no one ever sung that song. But that is Amazing how Elliot Hodge, who just had returned from heaven and sung that song. Now, I went to Garland, Texas, to a full gospel businessmen's meeting back in the 80s. And there was a man there and I cannot recall his name, but he was an assembly of God, and he died. And he was at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. I've been there. I know Parkland. And 
And they told his wife, if I recall, that he's dead. And she said, look, you do what you do, I'm going to pray. And they went to work on him to resuscitate him. And she prayed. And if I recall, he was dead 14 minutes. And he went to heaven. And I believe he talked to Jesus. Well, I'm sure he did. Folks, I haven't told this a long time, and I don't know about, well, many years. But, but he talked to Jesus. Now, he was an A.G., the Son of God. Some of you remember his name. You'll look it up, and then you tell it, post it, do something. But the last thing that Jesus told him to go home and study the Word of God. Study the Word. An assemblies of God. Study the Word. And then, if I recall, Jesus said, then I'll tell you what to do. And one day, he got a phone call from CBN, Pat Robertson. And he's on Pat Robertson's show. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for that man was ministering in Garland. He knew that I had water Life church. And he said, would you come up here and minister with me? <laughs> and frankly, I thought, me, minister with you, and you say you've been to heaven? Well, I went up. He was a very humble man. I knew Elliot Dodge. He was a very humble man. I did not know about him going to heaven three times until about three or four years ago. Reading his testimony. Thank God. Amen. I will share this with you. I said this to someone yesterday. I have said several times, Satan, I'm not going to die. Satan will not die. Satan will not die. Satan will not die. Now, not once did I ever think I would. Not once. But one thing I can tell you, Satan was at an attack against me that obviously God let it come against me that, had, that could have killed me. He said, well, why do you think that? Well, why would I say, and it works, got an attack on by me, Satan, I'm not going to die. Satan, I'm not going to die unless the, <laughs> the possibility was there. Now, I've never shared this, this plane, but I'm reasonably sure that God had given me 
the faith, the strength, the anointing to stop the devil from killing me. And you haven't heard me say that prior to this day. But you know what? The body of Jesus died. His spirit didn't. His soul didn't. Then hell, Jesus praised the Father all the time. Psalm 22, Psalm 88. And his soul and his spirit knew that on the third day the Father would raise him up. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And you know what raised him up? Praises. God anointed his praises. It says, Psalm 22, that God inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises. Well, today was the first day. There are other places. Uh, the first day that I will overcome this spirit. Praising the Lord. Glory. You think I'm not happy? You think not? Not willing to act like a fool for Christ's sake? Yes, I sure am. And I glory, I delight to be a fool in front of all of you. Guess what? I don't have any pain either. I think I'll sit down, Paul. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Thank you. What time? It is 11.40. That's about time to quit, isn't it? That's where I've been quitting. Amen. Is there anything else I want to say? I don't remember. Thank God. It was such a victory. But I tell you, the victory came right here. And then, what I share, that obviously God has allowed Satan to attack me and was perfecting my faith and my love to resist Satan from killing me. God's in charge. I know that. Thank God. And it worked. My prayer worked getting him off of me by resisting him and driving him out until this morning, it came with praise and worship, praise and worship, praise and worship, praise and worship. That's how Jesus got out of hell. You know what? I have a good friend, Mel Tari. He's been on this set with me more than once. Been in this church half a dozen times. And Mel Tari... Uh, was in the revival. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Bless the Lord. So, hallelujah. Thank God. In his whole plan. Somebody tell me the name of it. I can't even get it. Thank God. Indonesia. Indonesia. Thank you. Thank God. And Mel. In his book, I believe, uh, talks about they raised one from the dead. Thank God. And if I recall, 
Read it for yourself. Amen. Thank God. Melchior's book. Hallelujah. Amen. But if I recall, Mel was a doubter like me, and they told him, told him to raise somebody from the dead. If I recall, they said, sing praises. Sing praises. And by remember, Mel was really got hold on this, not by God have been. But if I recall, seemed like a toe move. A digit, I think, move. <laughs> oh, glory. Anyway, they raised him up. I think he'd been dead three or four days like Lazarus. Folks, we are entering in now this day to a new level of praise and worship and thanks and it's being perfected in my heart. Thank God. And it's going to spill over to you. Yeah, I'll say it. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, there's no name under heaven whereby one might, must be saved but the name of Jesus. No, not one name under heaven except the name of Jesus, whereby you might be saved. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm excited. Uh, you can't get me excited very often. Well, you never could get me this excited. I used to go uh, to attend football games with my professional friends, and I thought they acted like idiots over a touchdown. Jump up and down, clap, you know. Sorry, we got a football coach here. But <laughs> oh, good Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. But this name, Jesus, the only name under heaven whereby one must be saved his name is Jesus, say it. Following me, you'll be born again, saved, or one with Jesus in the Spirit. Jesus, 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 at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.